So pink is your hint for today's project, but the title probably already gave it away. I'm making a Barbie inspired project, hence all the pink. I just created a shortage of pink fabric at the local fabric store, purchasing about 50 yards of fabric that I'm hoping to fit all in one huge fluffy dress. Yeah, we'll see how long that takes. I am taking inspiration from this Barbie dress from the 1960s, but obviously making it in pink and glittery pink that is gonna get glitter all over my sewing room. I'm also taking some inspiration from some of Zendaya's retro looks, just that classic fit with that nice 60s hair on that one is definitely happening. But that Barbie dress is going to be the main inspiration. The shape of my dress is going to be very similar. The main difference is I'm gonna make it more poofy, more fluffy, and a longer train in the back. More fabric, more tulle, more sparkles everywhere. Like I just inhaled the sparkle. The petticoat is mainly gonna be white tulle and then the bottom layers are gonna be different layers of the pink to create like an ombre look from darker in the inside, lighter as you get out, and then we'll go on to the dress. But before doing anything, I needed to remove as much sparkle as possible from these fabrics. The floor was already covered and these fabrics have just sat around since I got them. Now we have a glittery lawn. With some peace of mind, it's onto the petticoat, which is going to be attached to a fitted under bodice. And lucky me, I found this bodice in a miscellaneous projects box, something I made years ago and have no idea what for. But alas, with just some small alterations, it fit perfectly and only needed a closure, which I did with this prefab hook and eye tape. With that, it's onto the skirts of the petticoat. The first base one is a nearly full length three gourd skirt made of a lining fabric. This is to keep the itchy tool away from me. Then it's onto creating three circle skirt tiers, which will be the base of all the petticoat layers. The main idea for this petticoat is to create no added volume at the waist and to just have a nice smooth line from the waist down to the bottom of the petticoat. The three circle skirts got attached to the gourd skirt and then all four of those are sewn onto the under bodice. At the back, I dipped the waist of the skirts lower in order to help achieve a longer back to the petticoat. Now for some tulle. Each circle skirt will have two layers of tulle attached. And to make this easier, and since I'm not sure how long each tier needs to be, I just unrolled my tulle and then used the already creased center fold of the tulle as my top edge to attach to each of the skirts. This edge is gathered and then sewn onto those circle skirts. Once done, this is the base of the petticoat and now a bunch of flounces need to be attached. At this point, I also calculated how much pink tool I needed to create as much volume as needed and quickly realized I needed a lot more yards, like a lot, as in 150 more yards of fabric. Yes, you heard me right. So I went shopping and definitely created a shortage at one of the stores of pink tool. But anyway, on to using all of these yards. To cut the flounces out, I'm using a similar method from what I used to cut out the Cinderella flounces. The first step is to get the fabric folded up. So with each of these folds, I'm creating a square of fabric that's folded into quarters. And then it's repeated again and again until the yardage is folded up. With doing that, at this corner, this is where all the middle points of each square is. And I now just need to turn those into circles. So using my little grommet setter, string, and a marker, I can mark the perfect quarter circle onto that folded fabric. Mm -hmm. 
once I get that cut out along the marking and unfold it, you now have a full circle or AKA a flounce. Though you do need to cut along one of the folded edges so you can attach several together to create a long length of flounces. Before going to the petticoat, I'm running two layers of flounces together through the machine to attach them together and give a slight gather. And then on to cutting out more flounces, but this time with the mid color. So I'm gonna set these aside for now and move on to attaching the darker pink flounces. I first attached a flounce section to the inner gourd skirt. And then I pulled down the first circle skirt and then the first tool layer of that tier and got it trimmed to the right length and attached a section of the darker pink flounces. I should also mention that I decided to cut the flounces at various lengths. I have 10, 12, and 14 inch flounces. These are spaced out throughout the layers to help give a more gradual smooth line down from the petticoat instead of having one point where all the flounces are attached. Now on to creating more flounce sections. For this next section, I'm doing a layer of the dark pink and then a layer of the mid pink. This is to help create a gradual line between the two colors to help ombre it. Before attaching this section, I did realize that with my circle skirts, I have an even amount of volume being added all around, but I want more volume in the back. So I created some tucks in the circle skirt to help pull more of the volume to the back of the petticoat. If you purchase the petticoat pattern, yes, there's a pattern. I've already made these adjustments on the pattern, so you won't have to worry about this part. But anyway, once I was happy with that, onto attaching the flounce section to this second layer of tulle off of that first tier. So now moving on to the next two tiers. I have the same problem of an even amount of volume around the petticoat, so I seam ripped the tulle off of each layer and ungathered the tulle. And then I reattached them, hardly gathering the tool at the front and then tightly gathering them at the back. So this helped move that tool volume towards the back and helped a lot. Okay, back to the flounces. So the first tool layer of tier two is another round of dark pink and mid pink flounces. And then the second tool layer is just the mid pink flounces. Moving on to tier number three, I actually needed some more length to the extra tool layer. And so I used some of the trimmed off white tool from those other layers and attached a little ruffled section to that tool and then trimmed it to the right length. And then I attached ungathered flounces, one layer of the mid pink and one of the light pink. It might seem really random with how I'm making these layers of the petticoat. And honestly, I really was just going with the flow as to how much fabric I had and what scrap fabric I had and just kind of trying to make it work. The last layer of the petticoat, instead of attaching another tool piece to lengthen it, I instead cut out some 23 inch flounces of the light pink and attached it there. So with that, after using about 180 yards of fabric, the petticoat is done. Moving on to the actual dress, we're first gonna focus on the skirt. So the base layer is this iridescent satin, slightly stretchy type fabric, and will be a five gourd skirt. The next two layers will be a combination of light and darker pink glitter tulle. This is where glitter got everywhere. Each layer will have five gores and five godets to it. 
and the two colors are mixed up between the layers to have some varying shades of pink throughout it, like you see that color difference in the Barbie dress, but obviously in pink. So the base fabric has a slight stretch to it, so in sewing I'm using a slight zigzag which allows for that seam to stretch slightly when it's hanging. Then for the tool, I'm doing the same zigzaggy thing but with a shiny, somewhat transparent thread to help hide the seams as much as possible. Once all the skirt layers and godets and gores and all that were together, it's onto the bodice. So during the mock-up and draping process, I usually create a center front opening to easily be able to pin it onto me and do all the fitting stuff, but then the final bodice will have the opening in the back. Once the pattern is finalized, I'm cutting out an interlining of cotton muslin, and then the outer fabric is that base iridescent fabric. These layers are lined up, and then the seams of the bodice are sewn. At each of the seams, I'm attaching some boning. These boning channels are just sewn onto the seam allowance, not all the way through the bodice. The top edge is then folded over, pressed, and using a catch stitch, sewn into place. Now to add some flair to the bodice. So I went back and forth as to what I wanted to do with this, but I eventually landed on this idea of grabbing some triangle pieces of the tool and starting with the point of them at the waist and then gradually have them open up and flare out towards the top. Once I liked the look of it, this is then loosely hand stitched in place with some clear thread. And then we're on to attaching the skirts and then a zipper at the back. The last thing is some hem trimming. And it made me so happy to see that the base fabric does not fray and would not need a hem. With over 200 yards of fabric going into this project, all assembled in three full days, this dress is complete.
We found some fun locations to do this final shoot, and the cherry on top was a neighbor of my brother-in-law's who owned this 1962 Thunderbird and was able to drive it in to have it used as a prop. So fun. As always, thanks to my patrons, YouTube members, and Instagram subscribers for their continued support. And also, I've got the pattern for this dress available on my website.